on his way to Morley Corrupt's offices. Are you Morley Corrupt? Of course not. I'm just backdating some records here. That's the man, Lieutenant. My friends here tell me that you tried to cheat them out of their rightful inheritance. That's impossible. I'm as honest as the day is long. You want to hit the light switch? It's on the wall. Look here. Did you tell them that one-half plus one-fourth equals two-sixths? Something like that. And everyone knows that two-sixths is just another way to write one-third. So they get one-third, and I get the rest. But, Lawyer Corrupt, we already know that Fluff was given one-half the estate. One-half is bigger than one-third, so we know you're cheating. That's telling them, Lieutenant. One-half plus one-fourth is not two-sixths. You can't just add the denominators together. Look, one-half is the same as two-fourths. And two-fourths plus one-fourth is three-fourths, not one-third. You're not a nice person, Lawyer Corrupt. That's what my law professor said. You'll be punished for this, you scalawag. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but names will... And that's what Dirk did. And that's what allowed him to get back to the bees. And that's what made him happy. You know, it makes a mathematician feel good to know that by using common sense and good old logical thinking, he can solve a lot of the world's problems. Hmm, I wonder what this sticky stuff is. You have a swell thumb. You mean swell thumb, as in swell elegant. I mean swell, as in swollen thumb. Gee, a talking bee. See you around the quad, Scoot. Yahoo! Eee! A screaming human! And as Dirk's thumb rises slowly in the east, we bid a fond adieu to one of the world's best mathematicians and worst naturalists. Red on your head! Hi, I'm Gilbert. I'm the host of the show. I'd like to give a shout out to my friends in I-71 and my class 8E. I'd like to give a shout out to my best cousin, friend, as I call him cousin because he's my best friend. Name is Ruben Estrella, my sister Jahira, and my mom, Linda, and my father, Gilbert. Now check this out. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Tuesday, 6.43 p.m., and not a trace of smog in the air. We were miles north of Los Angeles, California zip code 91603. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. My partner is George Bowlegs Frankly. Our friend is Bronco Guillermo Gomez. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We've been working, and working hard on several mathematical problems which we hoped would bring us closer to a fortune in gold. Gold that was stolen in 1853 from a stagecoach by a desperado named Saddlesore Capone. We decided to look at a few scenes from previous episodes to get the cobwebs out of our attics. And this is a copy of the map I made. Where did the original map come from, Bronco? It was found on Saddlesore Capone when he died. The map is in the library, and I've been studying up on the subject a lot, and I copied it there. This doesn't look like a treasure map to me. I mean, treasure maps always have an X where the treasure is buried. You know, X marks the spot. Bronco pointed out that thousands of people had looked for the treasure using part of a map, and no one had found it. I kind of stumbled on it. Look what happens when you see the reflection in this thermos. Okay, it reflects. So what? Watch what happens when I put it on the map right here. Here. That was enough to interest me and George, and we made our way to Mulch Gulch to look for stolen gold. Dijon Mutard, a librarian, warned us about an old desert rat in the area. A foxy old desert person named Rommel. Scruffy Rommel. And? Just be careful, that's all. Be real careful. And we found him. A harmless old fellow named Scruffy who helped us continue our search. We found the treasure! Yahoo! dollars <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own desert rat eyes. Open it up, Marge. Treasure? Yeah. 
sure? No. It's another map. Other part of map. See Myrer, 1853. Myrer? What does that mean? I don't know. We had assumed it was someone's name, and that someone had the other part of the map. We checked it out. We looked at old records, checked out books, even looked at headstones in the cemetery looking for someone with the name Myra. We found nothing. We were discouraged, to say the least. We're right back where we started. I ain't. You ain't. I mean, you aren't. Scruffy decided to go back to his beloved desert and left us to ponder the puzzle and play What If. What if C. Myra isn't a person, but a name? I mean, what if the word means something else? It was an interesting hypothesis. Mirror. See mirror? And it seemed to work. Other part of the map, see mirror. We finally had it. We'd bet on it. What the... hex? Hex? A hex is a spell of some kind. Something's funny about that word. Yes, the letter said symmetrical, if that's what you mean. Yes, if you put a mirror along one half, you see the other half. That's why they make the word. What I meant was, maybe he misspelled another word. Hex. Look. Bronco, you've done it again. Hex marks the spot. You know something? What? We know that Hex marks the spot. Uh-huh. What spot does Hex mark? Exactly. There are no landmarks in the map. <laughs> Nothing to relate to. Fire and solve, other part of map, C. Mirren. Hold it. We thought the message meant a man named C. Mirren had another part of the map, right? Right. Let's see the first part of the map, Bronco. They match. This is the other part of the map. We know that this triangle is to scale. Let's assume this one is too. inches from the tree, six inches from the dig site, and look, it's identical to the other triangle. Using triangulation again, we discovered where Hex marked the spot. I guess the gold is yours. No strings? No strings. What are you gonna do with it? You're gonna give it to me. Did you say something, Kate? No, but... Up with your hands. Stick them up. Mr. Mutar? Shh! What are you doing here? Coming to claim what's my own. Now, all of you, up with your hands in the air. Just a minute, Mr. Mutar. That gold isn't yours. It is now. I've been looking for it my whole life. Saddle so Capone was my great-grandfather on my mother's side, and that gold belongs to me. But Saddle so Capone stole that gold. It wasn't his to begin with. Oh, don't be a nitpicker, Miss Monday. Now, all of you, down on your tummies. I'm gonna tie you up. You're giving librarians all over the world a very bad name, Mr. T. John Mutard. Can't be helped. I just shush. Reach for the skies, you four-flusher! Don't try anything foolish, Jasper! Why, you low-down polecat! I'm gonna marry your face to that wall! 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 wall, wall. Scruffy, are you ever a sight for sore eyes? Howdy, Miss Kate. Hope I didn't interrupt anything. You know, I was thinking, what if that name C. Myrer wasn't really a name after all, but an instruction? You know, something like C. Mirror. Does that make any sense? Perfect sense, Scruffy. Perfect sense. Tell me, Scruffy, yeah? why didn't you use that gun on Dijon? Don't believe in him. Over there. Mutard. Get you for this, this rummel. What did he say? 
I didn't hear him, Scruffy. I don't know what he said. <laughs> <laughs> D. John Mutard was convicted of a 211 attempted robbery and a 020.313 disgracing the Dewey Decimal System. Bronco Guillermo Gomez took the $90,000 and saved $80,000 for his college education. The other $10,000 he put in a money market account, figuring the rollover factor would be about 6.7 times his principal in 20 years, if the market stayed healthy. Here's your host. This is the end of the show, Gilbert, and since you've been such a great host,